What's happening everyone? In this video we'll be covering the binary search tree validation function. In the beginning of this lesson we'll cover some background and towards the middle we'll open up a coding editor and actually implement the algorithm using Python. I was actually asked this question a while back in an interview with one of the big four tech companies and I struggled to find an answer so I figured it'd be a great topic for a new video. On top of that the binary search tree validator function was also requested by Brian Wahome. I hope I'm pronouncing that right over on another video on our channel, so thanks for the input, Brian. I really appreciate it. So specifically, the interview question I was posed was, write a function when pass an input binary tree returns true if it's a binary search tree and false if not. So effectively, we need to identify and return true if the binary tree follows the rules of a binary search tree. Before we go ahead, if you'd like to learn more about binary search trees in depth, I'd recommend watching our complete video on the topic, the link to which will be in the description. But essentially, a binary search tree is just a binary tree that follows a single set of rules. Namely, in a binary search tree, all nodes to the right must contain values larger, and all nodes to the left must contain values smaller than the value in the node itself. For a binary tree to be a binary search tree, this rule must be followed for every single node in the tree. So as you can see on the screen, we have some examples here of binary trees and binary search trees. On the left, as we can see, the rule we've just explained isn't followed for every node in the tree, meaning they are, by definition, not binary search trees. So if you take a look here, we have a, a 2 in the root for this uh, the tree on the top. And then if it were a binary search tree, every value to the left would need to be smaller. But if you look here, we have a 7. So obviously, that's not smaller than 2. And then if we go down the tree farther, um, everything else in this tree is actually correct, besides just the fact that there's values uh, larger than 2 to the left of 2. So another example would be we have 6 here. We also have 5 and 11. All these values are greater than 2, when in actuality they would need to be smaller than 2 for this to be a binary search tree. If you look down at the bottom one here, um, immediately we can realize that there's a value of 2 to the left of 1, so already we can tell this is not a binary search tree. Um, then also, if you look down at the 3 node here, we have a 6 to the left, meaning it should be a value smaller than 3, but in actuality it's a 6, so that's obviously larger than 3. And then, uh, you could try to go through these trees yourself if you'd like to, but I already went through them all and verified that they were binary search trees. In every case, we have values larger than uh, the middle value to the right, and then values smaller to the left. So for example, here we have 8 as the root node, and all three of these values are larger than 8, and then all the five values to the left of 8 are smaller than 8. On this slide, there are two binary trees, but only a single one follows the rules we just explained, making it a binary search tree. In a second, I'll reveal which is which, but if you'd like some practice, you could pause the video now and try to figure it out yourself. So as it turns out, the tree to the left is a binary search tree, and the tree to the right is just a binary tree. On the right, we can point to multiple locations where the binary search tree rules are broken. For example, there are two instances of the integer 5 to the left of uh, the root node 4 here, so obviously 5 is greater than 4. Uh, meaning that this already is not a binary search tree. Um, another example is we have a 6 to the right of a 6 node here, and depending on the implementation, sometimes you won't be allowed to have equal two values to the right or to the left, um, meaning you only have one instance of each, in this case, integer in the tree. So now that we can differentiate visually between binary and binary search trees, we need to formulate a way to implement it in code. Before we go any further, if you're posed this question in an interview, you'll likely need to ask questions of your interviewer to nail down some specifics. In this case, it'd be helpful to know what format the binary tree input will be in. For my interview and for this video, we'll stick to passing a single node object as the input, the code for which you can see on this slide. Each node contains a value. In this case, we're restricting this attribute to integers, a left child pointer, and a right child pointer. By default, the left and right child pointers will be set to none, allowing us to easily identify leaf nodes as nodes with the value none for both their children. If you're coming from our video on binary search trees, this data structure should be familiar as it's essentially the same node class we implemented there, just without some of the features we added in separately in the deletion video. So now before we switch to our coding editor and actually implement the algorithm, I'd like to just showcase my initial incorrect approach when I was asked to code up a solution for this problem. Essentially I decided it'd be easiest to write a function which, past a single node input, checks to ensure that node specifically fits the binary search tree rules then, using recursion, checks the rest of the tree. As you can see on the slide, when implemented in code it looks great and is fairly simple to read. For each node, we'll return false if either its right child is too small or its left child is too large. 
Unfortunately, this code is only partially correct. For example, it'd be able to correctly identify the tree on the right as being a valid binary search tree. But now if we add in an extra integer 99 to the bottom of the tree, we would once again output true, meaning this is a binary search tree when, in reality, it no longer fits the rules. The problem here being that 99 is definitely not less than 17 and 50, even though it shows up to the left of both 17 and 50. Seeing the failure in this approach, you should begin to realize we need to, in some fashion, propagate values down the tree if we'd like to differentiate correctly between binary and binary search trees. More accurately, we need to propagate a set of conditions down the tree. For example, to validate the tree on the right, we need the 99 value to be greater than 14, greater than 9, less than 17, and less than 50. We can simplify this expression of four conditionals down to two by saying we simply need the 99 to be less than 17 and greater than 14, eliminating some of the redundancy. Now that we've covered the rough overview of our algorithm, we'll switch over to our coding editor and actually implement it in Python. So now we have our coding editor open, the first thing we'll be doing is implementing our simplified node class. We're also importing the sys module, but we'll cover that later once we use it in the code. As we said earlier, the node class contains three attributes its integer value, a left child pointer, and a right child pointer. We can now begin writing the actual binary search tree validator function. We'll be writing it inside of a function named validateBST. The function will be passed three inputs, the first of which is the root of the binary tree, in this case as specified by the interviewer. The second and third inputs we'll call min and max are used to contain the conditionals which will propagate down the tree as we check each node. On each recursive call we'll ensure the value of the current node is greater than the min value and less than the max value. Because we can't set any real conditionals on the root node, at the outset we'll set the min and max values to be the smallest and largest values attainable in Python, respectively. If for some reason you don't have access to the sys module, or are implementing the logic in a different coding language, just do a quick Google search to figure out the maximum allowable integer in your preferred language or system. Now inside the function we'll first check to see if the current node is none, in which case we'll return true, same as in my naive implementation. In the second of statement, we'll perform four distinct operations, all of which must return true in order for us to return true out of the function. The first operation is to ensure the current node value is greater than the minimum set value. Similarly, the second operation is to ensure the current node value is less than the maximum set value. The third and fourth operations consist of recursive calls to the validate BST function. In the first recursive call, we'll pass the left child of the current node as the root, propagate on the same minimum value as the next minimum value, and crucially, pass on the value of the current node as the next maximum value. This will, in effect, constrain all children to the left of the current node by preventing them from having any values greater than or equal to the current node value. In the second recursive call, we'll pass the right child of the current node as the root, pass the current node value as the minimum value, recall that all values to the right must be larger, and propagate on the same maximum value. Like we said earlier, if all of these four operations return true, we'll return true out of the overall validate BST function. In the case that any of the operations fail, we'll return false, signifying that we were not passed a valid binary search tree. Now that we've finished up the function, we'll write some simple test cases to ensure it works properly. Because for testing, we want to be able to create binary trees that don't follow the rules of a binary search tree, we won't be using our binary search tree class from our prior video. Instead, we'll just be creating instances of the node class and hooking them up manually. I'll maintain a visualization of the current binary tree we're working with on the right of the screen throughout all the different test cases, so refer back to that if you're confused. On this first test case, we'll just create a root node containing the value 5 with two children, the left child containing 4 and the right containing 6. This is most certainly a binary search tree, so we should be returned true from our validate BST function. Switching to terminal and running the script, we can see we have correctly returned true. We'll now invalidate the binary search tree by changing the right child of the root from a value of 6 to a value of 2, making the right child of the root smaller than the root itself. We should now be returned false, signifying that this is no longer a binary search tree. Switching to terminal again, we can see we have correctly been returned false. We'll be running through a couple more test cases, but I won't provide narration because at this point, it should be fairly straightforward along with the visualization.
Well, thanks again for watching, everyone. Consider subscribing if you'd like to stay up to date on my Python content in the future. Again, don't hesitate to drop a comment if you have any questions or want to recommend any topics for me to cover. And I'll see you guys next time.